This video is sponsored by Software Keep. Get your Microsoft products at a discounted price. 42 degrees Celsius. That is cooler than the MacBooks. Apple's M2 Ultra Mac Studio is finally here. And as you can see, we got two of them, the M2 Max and the M2 Ultra. And we're gonna be doing a lot of testing with these. But in this first video, I really wanna find out if we can make this thing thermal throttle, so let's jump right into that. Now getting right into it, as you can see, I have a portable monitor set up to the side right here with the tripod. Nice little view for you guys, and this is the base model M2 Ultra Max Studio for $4,000. Comes with 64 gigs of RAM and the binned 60 core GPU. So before we get into the really intense benchmarks and tests, I do wanna run a simple Geekbench 6 benchmark. Now keep in mind this is version 6, not 5, so the scores should differ from what you're used to. And here we have our CPU scores and you can see we're at 2600 single core, which is very similar to the M2 Max, right around the same within margin of error. But for the multi-core, 20,785, which is the best score out of any Mac beating the previous M1 Ultra by about 18%, so that's for multi-core, and beating the M2 Max MacBook Pro by only around 44%, and that's because Geekbench 6 uses a different method where it has one large project that all of the cores attack at once, instead of previously, the task was multiplied or duplicated for each core, which gave higher scores. So only about 44% better. And now let's quickly run the 60 core M2 Ultra GPU test. Holy moly, 202,000 metal score. That is absolutely mind blowing for Geekbench 6 on this M2 Ultra. And that's only the 60 core GPU model. I'm excited to see how much the fully unbinned version has because Max is currently working on the Mac Pro with the fully unbinned chip. So subscribe right now so you don't miss out on that video. But to put this score in context, 202,000, if we look at the OpenCL charts, it's right up here with the best scores out of any machine. As you can see, it's almost as high as the 3080 Ti and 3090 Ti. I'm curious to see what that unbin chip does. Now the last test I wanna do before we start really pushing it and trying to get it to thermal throttle is 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme Unlimited, which will show us the difference in GPU performance for gaming. And I also have MX Power Gadget, and you can see it's peaking at 83, oh my goodness, it finished so quickly, 83 watts right there on the GPU. And here we have our score, 229.1 FPS for the M2 Ultra. That's actually 52% faster than the fully loaded 38 core M2 Max. Now that scaling is actually very, very good because this 60 core M2 Ultra has about 58% more cores than the 38 core M2 Max. So almost perfect scaling, just a little bit off. Very, very impressive. And now let's get into the big test. We have Cinebench R23 and we do have our sensors working thanks to a beta version of TG Fan Pro, which is awesome. So we're gonna start off with a regular multi-core test to kind of give us a baseline reading. And I'm also opening up MX Power Gadget to monitor the package power. Look at that, 70 watts right away from the CPU 71. And it looks like we're running 3.26 gigahertz for the performance cores with all of them fired up at once, so it does drop from 3.68 down to 3.26 when you use all of them. And here we have our score, 27,941. And believe it or not, the M2 Max in the 16-inch MacBook Pro scored 13,888. So this is just over twice the performance, basically perfect scaling in terms of the CPU. Apple, good job on that. And now let's turn on the 10-minute throttle test and heat this thing up and monitor what happens. But before I get into that, if you like working with documents, spreadsheets, or slideshows, our sponsor Software Keep is giving our viewers 25% off on genuine Microsoft software like Microsoft Office for Mac. They're fully legit since they're a Microsoft certified partner with over 100,000 five-star reviews and great customer service with 24-7, 365 customer support. So buy Microsoft Office for Mac or any of their other software today and save 25% off their already low prices by using the link below and the coupon code MTYT25. 
As we can see, we have 3.26 GHz for the performance cores, 2.42 for the efficiency, and so far, it's staying incredibly cool, still only 61 degrees Celsius max. We are utilizing 100% of the CPU right now, so no issues there, and wow! This thing is cooling it so well. This is insane, guys. It's been almost nine minutes and the hottest core is only 83 degrees. This is mind blowing. It's been stuck at full 100% utilization. Basically the same clock speeds. They haven't changed. This thing is a beast. It cools down so well. I can't even hear the fan. It makes zero sense. That copper cooler is insane. We only have about one minute left. So what I wanna do is plug in this thermal camera and I wanna look at the temps. Look at that. You can see the heat towards the back of the Mac Studio. Let me go around here. 42 degrees Celsius was the hottest I saw. That is cooler than the MacBooks get. That is so impressive and the fans aren't even, I can't even hear the fans. This is blowing my mind. Oh, you can actually see right here. The fan is basically at idle. 84 degrees is the highest temp, oh, 85. Literally, 108 is the limit where it starts throttling. It's only at 85 and now it's about to finish. And there you go, we have our score and are you kidding me? 27,940, one point lower <laughs> within margin of error compared to our base score. Basically zero thermal throttling or any loss with a 10 minute stress test at 100% CPU usage. Basically, you don't need the Mac Pro. This thing will cool the CPU down by itself easily without the fans even ramping up. And now I wanna try and do the same thing but for the GPU. Now I wanna start off with some final cut tests and I'm really curious to try out the new encoders because apparently with the M2 Ultra chip, Apple finally fixed the encoders because with the M1 Ultra, you got the same encoding speed as the M1 Max. No improvement at all. Even though it technically does have double the encoders, they just did not work and it was a massive fail. But now, it seems like they finally fixed it, so let's try it. And now I wanna start off by exporting this five minute HEVC project. This is the most common format that you guys are gonna be using right now. Most people will be editing HEVC, so it makes the most sense to run this first. So I've got my timer ready and let's hit export. As you can see right now, the GPU is only at 69%, which makes it seem like it's actually encoder limited, which means if you're doing this type of work, upgrading to the 76 core GPU will do nothing for you exporting this type of footage because it's limited by the encoders. And there you go, 47 seconds to export five minutes of HEVC footage. That beats the fastest export scores that we got on the M2 Max MacBook Pro and the M1 Ultra Max Studio. Now we got 47 on this M2 Ultra Max Studio. Now that test of course didn't do anything for throttling because the GPU was not maxed out. So we've gotta find something a little different. And now since that didn't really ramp up the GPU to 100%, we're gonna do the craziest test ever, our 8K Canon RAW to 4K export, which you guys gave us crap for before for running on a MacBook Air, the M2, which totally destroyed it, made it throttle. This is the ultimate test, so let's run it on the M2 Ultra Max Studio. Right away we could see that the GPU is heading up there towards 100%, 89%. CPU is also being used, so it's attacking both of them at the same time. Look at that. We're about 32% done. As you can see, the temps are ramping up slowly. The GPU's at just under 90% usage, 53% for the CPU, and surprisingly, it's just not hitting it for some reason. The temps are still staying cool, about 70 degrees for the CPU, average of 53 for the GPU. It seems like something else is throttling it and not allowing it to run at full performance. It's just about to finish the CPU, it's still only 82 degrees, 62 degrees average on the GPU, it's still not enough to throttle the M2 Ultra, and the fans 
aren't even on. As you can see right here, basically idle. It just finished five minutes and 14 seconds. But surprisingly, it's only a little bit faster than the 64 core M1 Ultra, which was 534. There was something else throttling the system because it was not thermal throttling so something else in there so basically none of that was working nothing could heat up the system and use both 100 cpu and gpu at the same time so let's do this we have lightroom classic 542 megapixel photos open at once let's export these right over here and i'm going to turn on a timer all right, as you can see, finally, 99% GPU, 99% CPU. It kind of hovers back between 90 to 100%. Sometimes it dips a little on the CPU side, but now we're really using a lot of power right here. The temps are already heating up quickly. We're at about 75 degrees for the hottest CPU core, 55 for the GPU. Guys, this is just shocking. I don't know how it's dissipating the heat, so well because the fans are still idling and the temps only looking at 82 degrees celsius for the hottest cpu core it's just doing fine it makes no sense how is this possible all right it just finished three minutes and 14 seconds for 500 photos we usually don't do that much we usually do 50 that is absolutely mind-blowing and the whole time the hottest core that i got was 86 degrees still nowhere near 108 that you need to actually really thermal throttle this thing and that was practically almost 100 percent cpu and gpu at the same time this thing is blowing my mind. And just to put that score three minutes and 14 seconds into perspective, our last $15,000 Mac Pro with the 12 core Xeon and Vega 2 GPU took over 12 minutes to export these 500 photos. But with all that said, the conclusion of this video is that I can't get this thing to throttle. Everything I could think of, I threw at it and it did not work. Only went up to 85, nowhere near 108. This thing is a beast. You don't need the Mac Pro cooler because that's definitely overkill because this thing's already overkill. The fans stayed at idle no matter what, even in that last test, almost maxing out the CPU and GPU at the same time. And I think even the 76 core version will have no thermal throttling whatsoever. This thing is an absolute beast. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, comment down below and subscribe for more videos coming up like this one very soon. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.